type. Blood type is your example of codominance. And the thing with codominance is that there's no one that is um, expressed over the other. They're both equally expressed. And so you have to understand the blood types. O is recessive. And when we're giving the genotypes, we have to have one letter. So that we have like a consensus and it's... Um, there's no confusion into which, so they typically pick I because it's not A, it's not B, and it's not O. It's so far from the spectrum, doesn't look like them, so they pick I. And so for O, your genotype is always going to be two lowercase i's. Because in order for you to have an O blood type, it must be homozygous recessive. Um, in order for you to have AB, because of the codominance, you're actually going to have the capital letter I, because once again, that's dictating blood type, but you're going to uh, use like a superscript or exponent to dictate the protein. So you're going to have one capital A and one capital B. For um, just A blood type, you're going to have one of two scenarios. You can have somebody who is homozygous dominant for that A protein, or you can just have a heterozygous. When something is heterozygous, it's assumed that you have one dominant, one recessive. And you already know that your recessive is O. So this is going to have one dominant allele, one O. Um, and then B is the same thing as you did in A. You'll have your blood type indicator with your eyes, but you'll have the homozygous B's alleles as your dominant protein, and then you'll have your um, heterozygous, which has that O. And um, because of this, your O blood type is going to be your universal donor, and your AB blood type is going to be your universal receiver because they can take blood from essentially anything. They can receive A, they can receive B, and they can receive O because everyone could receive them. Um, okay, so for starters, if it asks you to give a genotype, uh, homozygous for the B allele, what you do is you'd start off with your eyes because you're doing blood type. We typically choose eyes. If it gives you another letter to choose from, then that's fine, but just know that you're not gonna be doing X's and Y's here because we're no longer talking sex length. So, the fact that sex linked and blood types both have exponents gets kids thrown off. Um, so homozygous for the B allele. So that means I have at least one dominant B allele. And because it's homozygous, they're both going to be present. That's all you do. That's how you write the genotype. If you go into a heterozygous for A, it's that whole thing that we said we have one dominant allele, and because it's heterozygous, it's got to have one of the recessive alleles, so that O is present. And you just go from there. Um, and as we're going through, like let's say here it says Brad Pitt is homozygous. So this is number two. So you guys can work out the rest of number one. Um, it says Brad Pitt is homozygous for type B allele and Angelina Jolie is type O. So if he's homozygous for B and B is dominant, I already know that Brad is going to be um, homozygous dominant for the B allele, so two capital I's and two capital B's. And we're gonna cross him with Angelina who is type O. What do we know about type O? It's recessive, so we have to have two lowercase i's. We can go ahead and put these on a Punnett square. And here we have our law of segregation. So one parent goes to one side, the other parent goes to this side. And we cross them. You use your distribution. And now we know our possibilities for our offspring, which in this case scenario, all of our children are going to be type B blood type because that is one of our genotypes for B. The law of dominance tells you as long as you have one dominant allele present, that's going to be physically expressed. So when you write your genotype, you'll just write 100% and you tell me what the letters are. That's your genotype. 
So you guys can do the next one. Um, let's go down to number four. It says Mrs. Essie, not easy. Mrs. Essie is type A. Mr. Essie is type O. They have three children, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They got very biblical there. Mark, Mark is type O, Matthew is type A, and Luke is type AB. Based on this information, what must Mr. Essie and Mrs. Essie's genotypes be? Well, if she's A and he's O, we know one thing for sure. We know Mr. Essie. We know his genotype, right? Because O is recessive, so you'll always have two lowercase i's. And for uh, Miss Essie, we know one thing for sure. She's got one dominant allele. And in order for her to have a son that is type O, what must she be? What's that? She must have at least one recessive. So we consider that a what? A carrier or heterozygous. Good. So now that we have these two, we can go ahead and cross them. There's Mr. Essie, there's Mrs. Essie. And when you look at your probability, does it make sense then that Mark is type O? Well, yeah, because I have 50% chance it could be type O. And then it says Mark is type, or Matthew's type A. Well, I have 50% chance that I could have a type A. Luke is type AB. This is Essie. It's being a little scandalous because there's no way that that B protein could come from a recessive, homozygous recessive parent. So Luke is not Mr. Essie's son. Oh. It's scandalous. Jerry, Jerry. He's not the father. <laughs> or Murray, right? So. We, and you guys can see that, right? Because you know what the two possibilities are, and you know that two of the kids have the possibilities within that range, but that last one, there's no way that that B protein just decided to self-mutate and now exists. It's just no. So that, that's where paternity tests come into play. Earlier, we called her Miss Easy, because she was being... <laughs> to the one we just did. Let me see. Let's look at number seven. Because seven's where it starts changing a little bit. Hello. Hello. Kevin. Why do you do this to me, Kevin? Okay. How do I hold for you, Kevin? Am I stepping on you? Um, no. I think we're good. Oh, we're good. Yeah. 